Sofia Loren is a famous Italian actress, who was born on September 20th, 1934 in Rome, in a charity orphanage for single mothers. Her full name was Sofia Villani Ciccolone. Sofia's mother, Romilda Villani, lived in Pozzuoli, a small town near Naples. Besides Sophie, she had another daughter. The future actress spent her childhood in poverty, in a shabby and cramped apartment. Moreover, Sophie carried through her entire life the feeling that she was illegitimate. Her father is unknown. During the war in Italy, their family faced another problem – starvation. The actress's mother tried her best to get food for her daughters. Unlike her sister, Sophie was very tall and thin. At school she was very often called Stichette, meaning perch. But as she grew up, she was becoming prettier and prettier. During one interview she confessed that at a certain point it was as if she had hatched from an egg. In 1950, Sophia Loren, following her mother's advice, participated in the contest Miss Italia. Her grandmother made the dresses for the contest out of pink curtains and old white painted shoes. However, such an outfit did not prevent the future actress from winning the hearts of the jury and becoming Miss Elegance. As a result of the contest, Sophie won a trip to Rome, which completely changed her life. She gets a job as a fashion model and appears in little-known Italian magazines. Sophie's first paychecks were spent by Romilda. She paid Riccardo Ciccolone, the father of her first daughter, to allow both girls to bear his name. The stigma of being an illegitimate child was gone. Sophie, however, was not too happy about it. Soon she changed her name to Sofia Lazzaro, because she was advised to come up with a good-sounding pseudonym. But that name didn't become her last one either. At the time, Sophie was playing in the movie Africa Under the Seas. The producers wanted a less Italian name. And inspired by a Swedish actress Martha Torren, they came up with a pseudonym – Sofia Loren. Carla Ponti spotted Sofia Loren at a beauty contest. But fate brought them together a couple of years later in Rome. At the time, he was the father of two children. He made more than 20 successful films and developed another star, Gina Lollobrigida. Carlo invites Sophie to a movie audition, where she flat out refuses to change her appearance in any way. However, it did not stop Ponti. He must have realized that he was making the right bet. Carlo was a pillar of support for Sofia. At that time, she could support her sister and her mother on her own, but she still did not allow herself to be too picky about the roles. Lolo Brigida refuses the role of Aida in the opera film adaptation, and Sofia was chosen instead. At the same time, Lorraine became the mistress of Ponti. The producer was married to Giuliana Fiastri, at that time, their connection was more of a friendship. They were like a coach and an athlete, as their son Eduardo Ponti once said. Sophia Loren got the role in the American film The Pride and the Passion. Her co-stars in the film were Frank Sinatra and Cary Grant. Before filming, Sophie was invited to a party hosted by Stanley Kramer, the director of the film. The actress was madly nervous. At the party, Cary Grant teased Sophie by intentionally confusing her with Lola Brigida, but that did not prevent the actress from gaining his confidence. Later they would meet again, and then Cary would fall madly in love with Sophie. After filming, Sophie and Ponty went on their first trip together. They lived in a luxury hotel in Beverly Hills, enjoying the freedom and each other's company. Ponty and Sophie had been secretly engaged earlier. Hollywood did not understand Sophia Loren. It did not feel her energy and tremendous potential. They saw me as your typical foreign actress and tried to change me, as Sophie later recalled. 
At that time, her next work was the film Boy on a Dolphin by Jean Negulesco. The 1958 film Houseboat is considered to be Sofia's best role. The actress played the role of an ordinary Italian girl. Her colleague Cary Grant increased the feeling of calmness on the set. They managed as never before to show the chemistry of love on camera. Ponti did not like it. He even raised the question of a formal divorce. But Grant, meanwhile, continued to win the heart of the actress. You know, I had to make a choice, says Loren. But Carlo was Italian. He was from my world. And Cary Grant was not. Her heart did not fail Sophie, and soon Ponti divorced his wife. But the Vatican refused to accept the marriage of Sophie and Ponti and accused the director of bigamy and Sophie Loren of illegal cohabiting. They were hiding. They got married in France and rented an apartment under fake names. Later Loren said this on the situation. I don't regret anything. The film Two Women changed Sophie's acting career tremendously. It was one of her first serious roles. Initially, it was Anna Magnani who was supposed to play the role of the widowed mother. But she joked by saying that Sophie Loren would be great at playing a 50-year-old woman. Loren took Anna's words seriously. Filming began. Vittorio De Sica was chosen as a director. As a matter of fact, Sophie had to play her own mother, Romilda. It was not difficult to play this role. It was this film that made me a real actress, Sophie said, and then jokingly added, in the end, I owe my career to the whims of Magnani. For her role, Sophie was nominated for an Oscar, along with Audrey Hepburn for Breakfast at Tiffany's. Sophie ended up winning although she was not confident in her abilities. Later, Sophie admitted, I became famous in America because of the Italian films. Had I continued acting in Hollywood, I would not have won an Oscar. Grant was Sophie's best partner in American cinema and Mastroianni in Italian cinema. They got along perfectly in real life, and yet they were able to show true passion on the big screen. They were especially successful in the film Yesterday, Today and Tomorrow in 1963. By the way, one of the most erotic scenes of this film would be reshot many years later. The 60-year-old Sophie Loren would dance for Marcello once again. It would be their last appearance together in a movie. Mastroianni died of pancreatic cancer in 1996. As a woman, Sophie experienced horrible events. She had two miscarriages due to a hormonal imbalance. However, during her third pregnancy, she decided to take care of herself by taking a vacation with a strict bed rest on the shores of the Lake Geneva. In 1968, Carlo Ponti Jr. was born, who now works as a pianist. And four years later, Eduardo Ponti was born. The younger brother followed in his father's footsteps and became a producer. A few miles from Rome, Carlo and Sofia established themselves in a gorgeous 16th century villa. However, life in luxury did not last long. In 1977, their home was invaded by the Carabinieri. The couple was accused of tax evasion and taking money out of the country. It was only in the 90s that they got the villa and all the valuables back. Before that, both Loren and Ponti spent some time in prison. Sophie 17 days and Ponti 4 years. Despite this, the couple continued to love each other. In spite of her age, Sophie continues to act in movies. In 2010, she starred in her son Eduardo's movie Between Strangers. And in 2001, she easily outshone Penelope Cruz in the movie Nine. Ponti died in 2007 of lung disease. It's been a while since he died, but I'm not getting any better. I desperately miss my Carlo, my dear husband. But what can you do? You cannot possess everything at once in life. 
Sophie said in an interview. Sophie's last role was as Madame Rose in the film All Life Ahead by her second son Eduardo Ponti, which was released on November 6, 2020. The most recent news is that the ceiling fell on Sophia Loren at her home in Geneva, where she stayed during the pandemic. Sophie suffered some minor injuries, but in general she was only slightly frightened. Her health is good. To date, Sophia Loren is 86 years old. She still lives in Geneva with her secretary Ines Brucher. And that is all for today, guys. Subscribe to our channel, like and do not forget about the comments. Good luck, everyone!